Let's begin our meditation practice. Please find your find your comfortable posture. <coughs> Sit comfortably. Keep your back straight as much as you can. Gently close your eyes. Now bring your attention to your body. Take a few long breaths and relax your whole body. Relax your muscles, your head, shoulders, chest, left arm, right arm, stomach, up of the left leg, low of the left leg, up of the right leg, low of the right leg. Relax your whole part of your body. Relax your mind. Relax. 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 Now we all are going to spend some time with us with yourself. You are going to understand about yourself very closely. Meditation is try to understand your inner world. During your practice time, if you have any kind of doubts about yourself, about your mind, about your practice, you can ask question to yourself. If you ask any kind of question to yourself, it may help you to concentrate your mind. Same time you can learn some lessons from your self. Now make a little smile on your face, then you feel you are happy. Bless to yourself, wish to yourself, may I be well, may I be happy, may I be peaceful. May I be well, may I be happy, may I be peaceful. Just repeat these three words to yourself again and again and understand the meaning of each word deeply and clearly. 
May I be well. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. happiness it is not somewhere else you are the only person who can bring happiness to yourself make your own happiness make your own peace First of all, you should understand about yourself. Be a noble friend to yourself. May I be well? Am I a well person? May I be happy? Am I happy person? May I be peaceful? Am I peaceful person? Now imagine your family, your friends, parents, husband or wife, children, brothers or sisters, your girlfriend, boyfriend or best friend, also your neighbors, co-workers, bless to them, me, my family, be well be happy be peaceful may they be well may they be happy may they be peaceful Maybe you have very hard time with your family. Sometimes some memories will come to your mind. Those are not peaceful memories. Always hurting to yourself, 
harm, harm into yourself. This moment, try to understand about that memories. That emotional memories are always changing. You all have a lot of emotional memories. We all are emotional. When we think about emotional memories, we are getting upset, sad, disappointed. Understand them and let it go. Bless to them. May my family be well, be happy, be peaceful. We all are practicing unconditional love, true love. In this practice, we don't have any barriers to spread this loving kindness. If you have any kind of difficult people, annoying people in your life, this is the time to imagine them. Imagine them. Bless to them. May my difficult people be well, be happy, be peaceful. May they be well, may they be happy, may they be peaceful. If we think, keep thinking about our difficult people, annoying people, it makes as miserable situations, sadness, uncomfortable. but send in loving kindness to words to them. It makes us happiness, freedom. Understand Nobody perfect in the world. Everyone makes mistake. That is the human nature.
as a good meditation and practitioner, we have to forgive them. Practicing loving kindness is practicing forgiveness. In this current current situation, there are so many people. People are getting suffering. Things going on. Their self. Some people they don't have enough love. enough care in this situ- in this moment we cannot do anything but we can send our spiritual powerful energetic loving thoughts to them bless to them may all the living beings human non human and also nature of the environment be well be happy be peaceful may they be well may they be happy may they be peaceful With this loving motivation thoughts now we all are going to practice breathing meditation we are going to see our inner world take a few long breaths and understand your breathing process observe each breath mindfully breathe in mindfully breathe out mindfully breathe in mindfully breathe out mindfully Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out.
No need to control your breathing process. Keep your attention to the tip of your nose. Now you feel your breath, some breaths deep, long, some of them very short. Don't try to quiet your mind. Let allow your mind to come your thoughts in and out. When you see your thoughts, try to see them, how they are arising, how they are existing, how they are disappearing. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. You are taking natural breaths. If you understand the meaning of these breaths, you will understand the meaning of the life. The two meanings of the breath. Breathe in, arise, 
breathe out, disappear. That is the reality of the nature. Everything arises and disappears. Pain comes and goes. Thoughts come and go. Sensation come and go. Another meaning is we cannot breathe past or future breath. We have to breathe present breath, living in the present moment. Exactly we can enjoy ourselves. No more worries. No more plans. In this moment, you are having wonderful time with yourself. You are enjoying your breath. You are enjoying your life. Now your mind and body are relaxed, peaceful and calm. Just think how important it is to practice this meditation every day. It is bring to your own happiness, your own balance, your own peace. Now, please bring your hands together in front of your heart. Make a strong determination to practice this meditation every day at least 2-3 minutes. May peace be with you. May all living beings be well, happy and peaceful. Thank you very much. Slowly open your eyes. Okay, we can do our chanting, page number four. Namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhas Namo Tass Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhas Buddhang saranang gachami Dhammang saranang gachami Sangang saranang gachami Dutiyam bi buddhang saranang gachami Dutiyam pi dhammang saranang gachami 
दुथीयी तती बुद्ध शरण गच्छामि तती दम शरण गच्छामि तती संगं शरण गच्छामि अनिच्छावत संकारा उपादवाय दामिनो उपाजित्वा निरुच्छान्ति ते सं उप समुसुको सबे सत्ता अवेरा होन्तु सबे सत्ता अव्यापजा होन्तु सबे सत्ता अनेगा होन्तु सबे सत्ता सुकियता नं परिहरन्तु मानो पुब्बंग मादमा मानो सेता मानो मनसाचे पदुत्ते न बासतीवा करुतीवा ततो नं दुक्क मन्वेति चंकं वहातो पदं मानो पुब्बंग मादमा मानो सेता मानो मया मनसाचे पसन्ने न बासतीवा करुतीवा ततो नं सुक मन्वेति चायाव अन पाइनि We believe My wish
Okay. Good evening, everyone. So, how are you today? Doing good? Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, today we have a lay Dhamma talk, and Julie, uh, she is a wonderful friend in our community, and also she is a wonderful teacher of our Buddha Kids uh, program, and also she helps us us lots. Today I would like to invite her to come forward and give a Dhamma talk to us. So, yes, and enjoy the talk. If you have any qu- questions afterward, you can ask. Oh, yeah, sure. Yes. This is good. Okay. Should I put this on a stand or something? Uh, Oh, maybe I'll go up here. Sorry. I don't have to hold it. Okay. So hello, Sangha. Thank you for being here tonight. It's always special to be in the in the room together, in the special place together, right? It's really not like any other place when we come together. So I'm grateful to be here. And I'm grateful to the monastics for asking me to speak. So I'm passing around um, a photo And I thought, um, I'm going to wind my talk around uh, the Sangha dog who uh, died in July. And she was a big black Newfoundland dog. That's why I'm passing the picture around. And I wanted to just share some things that I learned from the blessing of having this dog Bodhi was her name, for almost nine years, and for things that I saw by being with her and learning from her that relate to the Dhamma. So first of all, I'll just tell you, um, she was really, really furry. (laughs) I'll give you an example. Um, So one time I took her to this groomer, and I went in there and I talked to the lady beforehand and I said, you know, she's, are you used to big Newfoundland dogs? They're really furry. And, you know, she said, oh, yeah, no problem. You know, I'm the owner. I see a lot of different dogs. I said, okay, great. You know, and she gave me, I don't know, the price, let's say $75. She goes, it'd be $75. And I said, that's fine. It's a big dog. It's great. I said, I'm going to drop her off and she, you know, she, I can come back after my afternoon and pick her up, and she said, okay, yeah, that's fine. That'll be great. So I came back, and this is what I saw. I saw this. (laughs) The lady was like this when I picked up the dog. When I picked up Bodhi, the groomer was just absolutely exhausted. And she said she had never seen fur like Bodhi had. You know, she was like a bear. So the things I wanted to focus on are the four sort of balanced or calm states of the mind and the qualities that make up that kind of calm state. And so the first one is loving kindness. And we we talk a lot about loving kindness here. We talked about it tonight, right? We practice for ourselves. We start with ourselves. And loving kindness, I, I have um, come to understand a wish. It's really a wish for well-being. So it's something that we offer from our heart, and we can do it to ourselves, and we can do it, we can offer it to other people. 
And so this is the first of the qualities of the content or balanced mind. And what is and and the reason the the way I saw Bodhi do that was and a lot of people in this room maybe have you know no Bodhi but um, almost to every single human that I ever saw her meet or interact with she would go up to this to the people and she would just like go up and she. So it kind of felt like a wish. It kind of felt like a, it's sort of a compliment when an animal comes up to you, I think, you know? So I always felt like that was, that was a kind of expression of loving kindness. And I really have to say, I never saw her growl at a human. The other example that I have of her, of loving kindness, was just the look in her eyes. I felt loved by her. And so this has made me think about my own experience of looking in people's eyes, you know? And what are people seeing when they look in my eyes? I think I have a chance to consciously, on purpose, express a wish of loving kindness to some other being. And I think may just maybe that also just like Bodhi, people can maybe see it in my eyes. I hope so. I feel like I'm seeing it in this room right now. The second quality of the balanced content mind is compassion. And compassion is really loving kindness in action. It's something that we do. So we have the, uh, is it the karuna wall? That's the word, isn't it? For compassion, right? So we have this karuna wall with all these names on it in the corner of the next room of the temple. And that really is compassion in action. Those are showing either donations of time or efforts, money, things we can see in space and time. So one example of seeing Bodhi doing loving kindness in action or being compassionate, a couple examples. One was when I was in front of the Starbucks, and it was a pretty summer day, and there was a lady who came up with a really little baby. I mean, a little baby, like like not an infant, but maybe just, I don't know, I'm not the good at the ages, but I would say like a, maybe like a, a year and a half around there, not walking at. And the mom said, you know, oh, I love your dog. And I said, oh, it's, it's great, you know, she loves kids. Um, but, you know, it's this like huge dog and then this little boy. And it's a dog still, right? And so I was like, okay, well, I, you know, I'm the owner, I'm the, the human <laughs> caretaker of the situation from the dog's end. So, Bodhi was sitting, and the lady said, well, sh- I would like to just put him, I think his name was Eli. I'd like to put Eli, is it okay if Eli, you know, gets near Bodhi? And I was like, you know, Sure, if you're comfortable with that. I know she's gentle, but, you know, she hasn't really been around little tiny people that much. But And what I saw in action was that little Eli came, and Bodhi was sitting, and Bodhi got smaller and smaller and smaller. And she laid down, and she put her head, and she just tried to be really small. And I think in some kind of entombment with that little human. I also saw recently our neighbor dog named Pixie overnight became blind. And Bodhi and Pixie didn't, they knew each other from kind of across the street and they didn't fight or anything, but they weren't really chummy. 
until we learned that this had happened to Pixie. And so I was, I was walking down the sidewalk with Bodhi and uh, uh, Pixie's, Jade is Pixie's owner, and Jade and Pixie were walking down the street, and I didn't know this had happened yet, because the day before she was fine. And we're walking closer, and Jade goes, oh, no, 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 you know, um, Pixie's, Pixie can't see. Something has happened. Pixie can't see, so be careful, because she's really aggressive right now, especially with other dogs and stuff, right? So I was like, oh, okay, okay. So they, she said, let's go slow. And so they, we brought, they brought the, we brought the dogs together, right? And, the, and it was okay. I mean, Pixie was really scared. I mean, can you imagine? You know, looking, trying to smell things. And, uh, I kept out of her way, you know? And Bodie and Pixie sort of did their little dance together and Pixie didn't move too much. She got, kind of was going like this. And then, it just seemed so natural that Bodhi started walking in front of Pixie. Just leading the way. It was like a dog seeing eye dog. And we did that until Bodhi, until Bodhi died. We would do that at least once or twice a week. Bodhi would lead Pixie around the neighborhood. And that was compassion, right? That was, in my opinion, that was like seeing it in action. It was really cool. So the third state is what we call sympathetic joy of the contented mind. It's an interesting one, right? There's only four. Sympathetic joy, ooh, it's a, that's a tough one. That's like the antidote to jealousy and envy and why is that ha- not happening to me, right? And also really feeling joy in the body, not just an intellectual idea. Oh, I'm happy for you. No, we're... I think that, in my opinion, that the that Buddhist teaching really was really feeling it in the mirror neurons that we have in our body, allowing ourselves really to to also feel joy. And so that was easy to think about Bodhi doing that. The last the, the morning before she passed away, she was you guys have seen this. She was rolling on her back like dogs do, right? And she's wiggling and. You know, and she's a big, big dog, and all that fur is going <laughs> this way, then that way, and all this kind of, you know, and she just, it just looked like it felt so good. And she would go, <laughs> and then she'd do it again, and she'd wiggle, and she'd just go like this. Man, you know, I can remember just, just watching her. In fact, I asked my cousin to come over and said, look, and we just sat there smiling at her. Now, they also have an example when Bodhi was not, um, I mean, the, our, our next word is actually equanimity, which is the balance part. It's this sort of finding and remembering for me, I interpret this for myself, remembering even the idea of balance. Balance is possible. Sometimes I feel so out of balance in some way, emotionally, my head, my body, whatever's going on, something in the world, politics, the environment, I mean, it could be a million things, and I'll feel out of balance. And I'll, maybe, it, maybe it, it, it's, it's just, for me, the first part, it's just remembering there is a sense of balance somewhere. There is some middle here. So I have an example of when Bodhi wasn't, wasn't in balance. So we were leaving the backyard, and I have a, a little fence there with a lock on it. And um, and I was just closing the the gate, you know, like always taking her for one of her walks. And it, was wind, it was kind of cold. It wasn't too snowy, but it was kind of cold. Anyway, so I was just going like this, and I was, I was holding this leash and trying to do the lock this way. And sure enough, she, before I even knew anybody was out on the sidewalk, she went right through that door and she went ba bum 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 huge dog right after the smaller dog 
and this man is watching this completely medium-sized dog and like another medium-sized dog. And I knew they were both shelter dogs and they lived somewhere in the neighborhood, but I didn't know where. Well, it was terrifying. Now she didn't bite the dog, but she was really out of balance. She was obviously being aggressive, trying to read her mind or thinking, you know, guarding her territory. Dogs do that sometimes, right? Didn't know me from Adam. <laughs> Didn't listen to me. I had been training. I went to puppy one. I went to puppy two. Nothing. So that was a very uh, good example of not being in balance. And so, and I really yelled at her, and I took her back, and I, and I locked it, and I ran after this guy into his garage. And I just said, I'm so sorry. Is your, are your dogs Okay. It was one dog, really. I said, you know, is your dog okay? And, and he said, oh, yeah. He goes, oh, I said, I'm so sorry. That was scary. That was awful. And while I'm sitting there talking to this guy, you know, very upset myself, the dog that Bodhi went after comes up to me. Compassion. Well, I start crying. <laughs> the guy's like, um, we have to go now. Um, <laughs> But that was a good example of not being in balance of something that I saw happen so quickly. And I can, gosh darn it, certainly relate to that. Certainly relate to that. I'm often running. If I'm not physically being aggressive, which I'm not very often, maybe in the tennis court, um, boy, I am inside. I'm sure having a fantasy of doing it. That's not a way to have a content and balanced mind. It's to recognize that and remember there is balance somewhere. So I guess I'll just close with the beginning of Bodhi becoming <laughs> the Blue Lotus uh, Sangha dog. And uh, Marty was there. Bodhi was 14 weeks old when we got her. And, uh, Tyler Lukey, who's the president of the board here, and I got this dog together, this puppy, with Tyler and his family. And we got her, and that day, as was planned, we brought her over to the monk's backyard for Bodhi to get her name. So Bhante Sujada was going to name the puppy. So we brought this little Newfie, looked like a bear cub, over <laughs> and uh, you know the monks are giggling as monks will do and Bodhi's running around sniffing and we have a video of it and and um, Bhante says Bodhi that's the name Bodhi and we we're like great I'm like well what's that mean and he says well that means enlightened or awake and I said oh that's cool you know which became really funny later when she'd be snoring you know, laid out inside. But she gets this, this name, and he goes, Bodhi, and we're like, great, we're so happy. We're so, we're just laughing and watching this little dog, all of us. And Bonte says to Tyler and me, I want you to picture the day that Bodhi dies. And we were like, what a buzzkill, right? Like, what? He said, yes. He goes, I want you to picture the day that Bodhi dies. And if you can handle that, then you will do this dog well. You will serve her well. If you can handle that. And so I'm sharing all of this in the spirit of learning so much from this dog, Bodhi the bear, and sharing it with all of you here. I've learned that I can handle it. And my wish is that you can handle it too. And as a sangha, we try to do that together. 
Thank you very much.